Hi there, folks, and welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to put our knowledge of spherical coordinates to use to solve the following example problem. Here, we have some ice cream occupying the solid region E in R3 that lies inside this sphere and above this cone. We'd like to calculate the total mass of ice cream, given a mass density at point x, y, z, of x squared plus y squared plus z squared kilograms per meters cubed. Okay, now I know there's a lot going on in this question, so let's take a step back and try to establish a game plan. Here, we're asked to find the total mass of ice cream occupying the solid region E. Well, hopefully this makes you think back to our applications of integration video, where we talked about the total mass being the integral of the mass density function. So we're gonna have to compute the triple integral of this function here throughout our 3D region E. Now at this point, I think you know the first step. Draw the region. As a little bonus, what kind of ice cream is occupying this cone? All will be revealed at the end of the video. Okay folks, our solid region E lies inside this sphere and above this cone. In our last lesson, we learned that both spheres and cones can be described really nicely in terms of spherical coordinates. And that's a good thing because these equations are pretty messy. So I'm going to go ahead and make the conversion from Cartesian to spherical coordinates and hopefully the equations clean up. Let's start with the sphere. x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 9. Now I happen to recognize this as the equation of a sphere of radius 3. So in spherical coordinates we could write it simply as r equals 3. But what if you didn't recognize this as the equation of a sphere of radius 3? How would you make the conversion? Well, remember folks, you can always fall back on your conversion formulas. If you replace x, y, and z with these formulas above, you should be able to simplify this expression down to r equals 3. In fact, that's exactly what I'm going to have to do with my cone. This equation's a little too complicated, and I'm not sure what it's going to look like in spherical coordinates. So let's replace x, y, and z with the expressions above and see what we get. On the left, we have z, which we can write as r cos theta. On the right, we have the square root of x squared, which I could write as r squared sine squared theta cos squared phi, plus y squared, which I could write as r squared sine squared theta sine squared phi, all divided by 3. Now at this point, I notice that both terms under the square root have an r squared sine squared theta. So I could factor that out, and I'd simply be left with cos squared phi plus sine squared phi. Those terms add to 1. So after a bit of simplification, the right-hand side becomes the square root of r squared sine squared theta all divided by 3. By applying the square root, the right-hand side can be written as r sine theta all divided by root 3. And now you can see we're going to have some cancellation. We have an r on the left and an r on the right. We can throw them out. This leaves us with cos theta equals sine theta over root 3. If we rearrange this to put all our theta terms on one side, we could write the equation as tan theta equals root 3. Ah, but hold on a second. In our last video, we said that theta was between 0 and pi. So if theta is between 0 and pi and tan theta is root 3, well, go back to your unit circle. There's only one possibility for theta. Theta is pi over 3. So there you go, folks. This complicated equation of the cone in Cartesian coordinates simplified to theta equals pi over 3 in spherical coordinates. At this point, we're ready to sketch our surfaces. Let's start with our sphere. The sphere is centered at the origin and has a radius of r equals 3. So it might look something like this. What about our cone? Well, the cone is described by the equation theta equals pi over 3. And if you'll recall from our last lesson, theta represents the angle our points make with the positive z-axis, right? With the north pole. So the cone consists of all points that make an angle of pi over 3 with the positive z-axis. And since rho and phi can be anything, we're going to be going all the way around the z-axis, and we can extend out as far as we like. The cone looks something like this. Ah, now we can see our solid region E. E is the solid that lies inside the sphere and above this cone. It's this region right here. On the next slide, I'm going to clean up this picture and we'll set up our integrals. 
Okay, you can see I've cleaned up our picture by trimming away the extra bits of the cone, labeling the radius of the sphere, and shading in that solid region E. Remember, we're looking for the mass of ice cream that occupies this region. And on the first slide, we agreed that the total mass would be the triple integral over E of the mass density function given to us in the question. If we're going to be integrating throughout this region, it probably makes the most sense to set up our integrals in spherical coordinates. So we have to determine the bounds on r, theta, and phi as we move throughout this solid. Let's start with r. Remember, r represents the distance from our points in E to the origin. And if we look at our picture, we see that we can essentially extend out as far as we want until we hit the cap of this sphere. This sphere has radius 3, so our r value could take on any number between 0 and 3. What about theta? Well, remember, theta is the angle that our points make with the positive z axis. It looks like they could make an angle of 0 radians, right? They could be on the z axis, but the angle could increase until we hit this cone. We have to stop once we hit the cone. What angle is this? Well, according to our picture on the last slide, we have an angle here of pi over 3. So our theta value could be any number between 0 and pi over 3. What about phi? Well, phi is the easiest one of them all. Remember, phi measures our angle relative to the positive x-axis. And in this picture, we can actually go all the way around. Our phi values could be any number between 0 and 2 pi. Okay, we've determined the bounds for our solid, and now we're ready to set up our integrals. On the outside, we have the integral with respect to phi, whose bounds are 0 and 2 pi. Then we have the integral with respect to theta, with bounds 0 and pi over 3. And finally, on the inside, we have the integral with respect to r, with bounds 0 and 3. Next, we're going to have to do something about this function, x squared plus y squared plus z squared. We have to convert it to spherical coordinates. Now, I can't stress this enough. If you don't know how to make the conversion off the top of your head, just fall back on your conversion formulas. Replace x, y, and z with their descriptions in spherical coordinates. Clean up the expression. It'll work every time. But in this case, it's not too hard to see that x squared plus y squared plus z squared is exactly r squared, the square of the distance from a point in r3 to the origin. So I'm going to write r squared here. And finally, we include our new volume factor, which in spherical coordinates is r squared sine theta dr d theta d phi. Whew, okay, the hard work is done. Now we'll wrap up this problem by evaluating our integrals. Our conversion to spherical coordinates actually made our integral very nice. Our bounds are all constants, and our function splits up nicely into an r part, a theta part, and a phi part, which is just one. So we can actually break up our three integrals. We have the integral from 0 to 2 pi, d phi. The integral from 0 to pi over 3, sine theta, d theta. And the integral from 0 to 3 of r to the 4, dr. Now my phi integral is going to evaluate to 2 pi. For the theta integral, I could use minus cos theta as an antiderivative. I'm going to evaluate from 0 to pi over 3. And for the r integral, I could use r to the 5 over 5 as an antiderivative and evaluate from 0 to 3. This gives us 2 pi times minus cos of pi over 3 plus cos of 0. And from our final integral, we get 3 to the 5 over 5. Now, minus cos of pi over 3 will be minus 1 half. And we're going to add 1 to that. So this first bracketed term is just 1 half. That's going to cancel with the 2 out front, giving us a final answer of 243 pi divided by 5. That's about 153 kilograms of ice cream. Not bad. If you're curious as to what type of ice cream is in this cone, it's Tiger Tail, my favorite. It's orange and black licorice. Sounds disgusting, but it's so good. Give it a try.